Well, welcome back once more, all my YouTube browsers and subscribers, and thanks once more for joining me here on my classic dirt bike TV channel. Now, our next set of featured videos are, of course, all the glitzy and glamorous machines spotted at the 2020 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. Now, this event, of course, is sponsored by Hagen Shocks and the Morton's Media Group. Now a full two days of looking at some of those fantastic classic dirt bikes so I hope you'll stay with me for the next few minutes as we begin part one. So let's step straight into the Telford International Centre and look at our first machine. Okay to get this part one of the 2020 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show underway we're going to take a look at this beautiful 1970 AGIS. 250 Stormer. Now whether this is a new bike or a full-blown restoration I'm uh, not really sure but nevertheless it certainly is an absolutely superb looking uh, machine. Now this bike belongs to uh, Graham Nock. Of course a British made machine with the uh, 250 Villiers uh, two-stroke uh, motor. Now there were some fantastic looking machines at the show this year over the course of the two days and unfortunately many of them were so tightly packed together it wasn't easy to actually uh, work your way around some of the bikes but uh, we did our best and hope you enjoy some of the machines that we are uh, just about to show you. Now back in the day these uh, little Stormer 250s with the Villiers uh, motor were uh, decent enough little bikes and uh, they were very light and very manoeuvrable for a small 250 machine. Now the Stormers were initially made from 1968 and the first private rider, rider to ever score a win was a certain uh, Alan Arnott in March 1969 at a scramble at uh, Bulford Down in Wiltshire in the UK. Now many other famous riders rode these uh, Villiers machines, uh, a certain Andy Robertson uh, was one of those riders and of course uh, Malcolm Davis who won the 250 British Championship in 1968 and again in 1970 on one of these bikes. Now these old AGIS Stormers are great little bikes for restoring as you can still obtain every single part you need to build and restore one of these uh, British made machines just by visiting the AGIS Motorcycles website at uh, agismotorcycles.co.uk So there you go, that's our very first machine from the 2020 Telford Show, a 1970 AGIS Stormer 250. Now our next featured machine was attracting a lot of attention over the two days at the show and it is a very rare 1987 ATK 560 with uh, a superb Rotax uh, four-stroke motor. Now ATK if you remember was founded by Austrian-born engineer Horst Leitner in the early 1980s. Now the bike's title ATK comes from Leitner's 1981 patented device which he designed to eliminate chain torque which uh, was to help improve the bike's handling. Now he called this device the Anti-Tension Kettenen Tribe or ATK although this was uh, later then changed to the Atrax. Now in this particular shot you can see that the rear disc brake is on the back wheel whereas in Leitner's original design this disc brake would have been fitted right next to the primary drive sprocket. Now I'm sure you don't need me to tell you how good these four stroke Rotax motors are. Single cylinder of course with this uh, twin uh, cylinder head exhaust. Uh, twin port exhaust going into a single exhaust tailpipe. Now the engines of course were belt driven camshafts with the belt uh, housed inside this uh, 
cover down the left side of the motor. Now this motor of course is a 560cc uh, engine and this particular ATK is fitted with uh, very good quality white power uh, upside down suspension units. Now another one of the innovative ideas that uh, ATK had was to fit the single rear monoshock to one side of the swinging arm rather than fit the shock to the central position and this was done to basically uh, aid the bike's suspension removal uh, during a race uh, situation. And in this shot you can just see that single rear uh, shock system bolted onto the left hand side of the swing arm and uh, this of course was just done to make it quicker to remove the suspension. But these were very good bikes in their day, these ATKs and even the two-stroke version with the two-stroke Rotax motor in it was a very good little bike in its day but uh, it's very good to see these obscure uh, classic dirt bikes uh, here at the 2020 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. Okay, moving right along. Now, our next couple of machines are a pair of really nice machines built by Paul Balsili of Balco Motorcycles uh, here in the UK. Now, I featured a few of Paul's uh, machines on my YouTube channel previously, and uh, these are all top quality machines that uh, Paul uh, puts together. Now this featured bike is a Matisse framed uh, machine with a 500cc Triumph twin motor. Now this particular colour scheme may not be to everybody's liking but that's the beauty of uh, these bikes built by Paul that he can put these bikes out in almost any colour that uh, you could imagine. Now this bike is a Scrambles uh, motocross uh, variation of course. Now the engine is a high compression variation of the popular Triumph Twin and it has uh, also got uh, upgraded race cams and a 31mm uh, Makuni carburetor. Now nevertheless despite the colour scheme on uh, Paul's uh, bike the engineering on this machine is absolutely first class and uh, just has a certain uh, unique look and uh, for me it was uh, a very eye-catching uh, little uh, Triumph Twin. Now the motor has also been fitted with the Electrex electronic ignition system now the bike always also has a pair of Italian Seriani front forks and a pair of wide bodied rock shocks on the rear. But there is certainly some nice engineering uh, gone in to tuning this lovely uh, 500cc Triumph twin motor. Now on the day Paul had this bike advertised for the pricely sum of just £14,000 so if you're looking to grab yourself a bargain then uh, contact Paul through uh, his Balco Motorcycles uh, website. Or if you would even prefer Paul can also build you one of these lovely machines to your own specifications so yet another reason to uh, give him a call if uh, you're in the market. But you can only imagine what this little Triumph 500 twin motor sounds like when it gets uh, fired up and the sound that comes from these beautifully engineered uh, exhaust pipes that uh, go down the right hand side of the machine. 
But without doubt, the bike certainly has the look of the old uh, classic scramble. So that's uh, Paul Balsillis at Scrambles uh, Matisse Triumph. Now, one of the other machines that Paul had on display was this uh, beautiful uh, Triumph Trials uh, machine. Now, of course, we normally don't cover Trials bikes here on my uh, classic dirt bike channel, but uh, this was such a very nice looking machine that uh, I thought I'd just let you have a quick uh, look round. Now, this bike is uh, also fitted with a 460 cc triumph twin motor and a very radical uh, looking frame and exhaust system now i'm not entirely sure uh, who built or what manufacturer put together the frame but it is certainly uh, very radical and just looks the part on this beautiful trials machine Now the engine on this bike is actually quite rare in that it has an alloy barrel on the Triumph twin motor. Now it's also fitted with a wide ratio gearbox. Now there is also no oil tank on this bike as the oil for the engine is contained uh, within the frame. Now straight away you can see that this bike has, hasn't just been thrown together, there's some fine engineering being taken place to put this beautiful machine together. Not only the engine but that beautiful alloy pear shaped fuel tank. Uh, enamel concentric carburetor of course to feed that uh, Triumph twin motor. But uh, this lovely green and uh, alloy colour scheme for me uh, just does it. It's a absolutely beautiful little uh, trials machine and just another one of the fine machines that uh, Paul Balsili puts together on a regular basis. And of course if you're interested in any of the bikes and some of the uh, products that Paul builds for these bikes just uh, give him a call or visit his uh, website at uh, Balco Motorcycles. But both of Paul's bikes were uh, attracting a lot of attention over the course of the two days at the show and uh, there was many people uh, wanting their pictures taken besides these uh, beautiful uh, Triumph uh, based machines. And although I'm not a trials man, I must admit I do like the engineering on this particular bike. Uh, looks absolutely first class. So there you have it, a couple of really nice machines from uh, Paul Balsili at uh, Balco at Motorcycles. Now just to continue our theme uh, with trials bikes, uh, from the show. These superb CCM trials machines are the latest creations from uh, Joe Maxwell Engineering in Dumfries in Scotland. Now Joe normally builds replica 1974 580 CCM scrambles bikes but uh, is now starting to build these 350 CC uh, replica trials bikes which are based uh, on the iconic uh, 350cc 1978 Alan Clues uh, classic trials bike. Now Joe Maxwell is building these bikes as a frame kit which uh, gives you the frame, the swing arm, the fuel tank, uh, the side panels and the seat. Now this featured bike is a fully finished uh, replica uh, based around the original 350 uh, complete with that beautiful CCM uh, motor. Now back in the day these 350 CCM bikes were very popular 
with Trials Riders, although these days you can't get hold of uh, original versions of this bike. Now these are the frames after construction and in this particular case this one has been chrome plated with uh, that beautiful swing arm and rear chain guard. Now these are the frame kits that uh, Joe can supply with these beautiful frames, the uh, fuel tank, the seat, the side panels and swing arm and then of course you fit your own rear and front suspension as required. But they're absolutely beautiful pieces of uh, engineering and uh, I can see these uh, 350s being very popular with Trials riders. And at the time of uh, taking this short video clip you can see that uh, Joe has already sold one of these frame kits and this was just a couple of hours after the show had opened. But it would be good to see these old uh, 350 CCMs back uh, doing trials events and uh, of course keeping alive the memory of the man that uh, started it all off uh, the late Alan Clues. But if you need any more information regarding these frame kits or any CCM parts for Scrambles Machine, just visit uh, Joe's website here at Joe Maxwell Engineering. Uh, dot com. Okay, we're back to Scrambles machines again. Now, here are a couple of really rare and very special machines. Now, these next two bikes are the late uh, Vic Eastwood's superb Hagen Yamaha and uh, Suzuki race bikes. Now these Vic Eastwood uh, Hagen Yamahas were very unique uh, due to the fact of course that these machines never ever had the standard uh, steel frame but the entire frame with its integrated uh, fuel tank was all one solid piece of aluminium. Of course the reason uh, for building these bikes with these solid aluminium uh, mainframes was of course to keep the weight to the very minimum. Now there were a lot of uh, aluminium fasteners used on building these uh, Hagen Yamahas and yet again that was uh, of course to keep the weight to the very uh, minimum. But this was a radical design uh, back in the day to have this uh, all alloy uh, frame with that integrated fuel tank although when you look at the fuel tank it does look like it is separate from the frame. A very substantial uh, swing arm on this uh, Hagen Yamaha looks uh, superbly strong uh, reinforced of course by this uh, further pieces of aluminium bracing. Hagen shocks of course as you would expect on these uh, Vic Eastwood uh, Hagen Yamahas and if my memory serves me correctly these bikes had a Yamaha YZ uh, rear brake uh, drum. But there is a fuel tank and uh, when you look at that fuel tank it does look like it's actually bolted on to the frame but uh, it is not exactly, it's uh, all part of that single piece of aluminium. Now the motor I think was, if I remember, was a big 500cc XT Yamaha motor and it looks absolutely fantastic surrounded by all that well engineered aluminium. Now I'm sure these bikes had the Yamaha YZ front forks fitted uh, back in the day and certainly looks like uh, Yamaha YZ uh, forks and uh, front uh, brake hub uh, quite decent suspension for its time but nevertheless a fantastic uh, looking bike uh, of the late uh, Vicky Sweet which of course 
he sadly lost uh, back in 2019. Now this was one of the other bikes that was uh, on the Hagen Shocks stand at the show. This of course is another Vic Eastwood uh, Hagen uh, alloy framed Suzuki this time. Uh, much the same design as the original Yamaha frame but of course this time fitted with uh, the Suzuki uh, four stroke uh, motor. Now, as you probably guessed, I'm not entirely up to speed on the history or manufacture of these beautiful uh, Hagen machines. Now, this particular Suzuki motor, if my memory serves me correctly from back in the day, was based around the old SP370 uh, four-stroke Suzuki engine. And uh, I'm sure this particular motor was then bored out to 450 cc that was of course in order to keep it competitive with uh, many of the other big four stroke machines that were uh, racing on the track at the time but it's such a radical design to have this uh, fully integrated uh, box section uh, alloy frame with that integrated uh, fuel tank uh, no other manufacturer uh, even tried something as radical as this and of course uh, this bike would be very light with uh, regards to the overall weight and a pair of nice uh, air Fox shocks fitted at the rear of this uh, Suzuki but uh, in their day these were very competitive machines and uh, when you got the likes of uh, the great Vic Eastwood astride one of these bikes then uh, there wasn't much that would uh, get in his way. Now these air filled Fox shocks were very popular uh, way back in the day and uh, did their job quite well but uh, tended to uh, overheat slightly and but uh, up until that point these were uh, very decent uh, shocks for the time. Now another radical innovation on this bike was to have this uh, rear brake pedal which actually pivoted uh, around the front of the engine rather than from around the footrest. But a pair of superb looking machines, that's the Vic Eastwood Hagen uh, Yamaha and Suzuki four-stroke machines. Now although this is not of course a motocross machine by any stretch of the imagination this was uh, causing quite a lot of interest over the weekend. Now this bike is a 1912 Verdel. Now it has a five-cylinder radial motor which uh, is 750 cc's. Now this is just one of the bikes that was supplied over the weekend by the legendary Sammy uh, Miller Museum. Now the bike is a single speed and it has the standard uh, coil ignition system that you can just see here on the left hand side of the motor. Now for the love of me I just can't imagine what this uh, bike sounds like when it actually gets going but uh, it certainly is another uh, very innovative uh, classic motorcycle. Now we know it's not an off-road uh, motorcycle but this machine was causing so much interest over the weekend it was even quite difficult to get a bit of space to take these short video clips and pictures. But this is just one of over 400 motorcycles that uh, Sammy Miller has in his superb museum and uh, if you're in the south of the UK uh, it's certainly worth a visit to uh, Sammy's premises to view these uh, wonderful uh, machines. But it's certainly worth a look and certainly something 
very different. That's a 1912 Verdal radial uh, motorcycle. Okay, next up is a very brief look at a couple of machines from the Cotton Motorcycle Owners uh, Club stand. Now, this uh, first bike is a 1963 Cotton Cobra 250. Now, this bike is uh, not totally original, although it does have its original frame and swing arm from 1963. Now many of the other parts on this machine are period correct items including uh, this uh, lovely uh, Villiers uh, motor. Now some of the other bits of information that were supplied with the bike on the day were that the motor was fitted with a CR conrod and uh, quite unusually an RM uh, Suzuki piston. Now back in the day these were very good little bikes, these uh, cotton machines powered by these Villiers engines. Although as to why uh, the, <laughs> the company would call themselves uh, the motorcycle uh, masterpiece I'm not entirely sure but uh, nevertheless uh, they must have their reasons. Now these cotton frames were also fitted with uh, all other uh, manner of engines including uh, Triumph Twins and uh, you could uh, do quite a lot with these cotton frames and of course in this particular case it's this uh, lovely Villiers 250cc uh, two-stroke uh, motor. But the Cotton Motorcycle Owners Club had many of these lovely machines on display. Naturally we can't cover them all but uh, we're just going to show you a couple of examples uh, in this particular case. So that was the Scrambles 250 uh, cotton. Now this uh, next uh, lovely machine is a very nice uh, cotton trial spike. Now in this particular case this bike is powered by an Italian uh, Motori Minarelli uh, motor. Now we never really got to see any information with regards to this bike on the day but uh, it does look like it's about a 250cc uh, uh, machine. Now these uh, Motori Minarelli uh, engines were used in a multitude of uh, different uh, frames over the course of the years and uh, I must admit it looks uh, just the part sitting in this uh, lovely uh, cotton uh, trials frame. Now we managed to cover as many bikes as we could over the course of the two days. Now naturally we're never going to be able to feature every single machine but over the course of the next few videos we will see some fantastic looking machines from the Telford 2020 Classic Dirt Bike Show. So that's a couple of uh, very nice uh, little uh, cotton machines from the Cotton uh, Owners Motorcycle Club. Okay, back to Scrambles machines again. Now this pair of uh, WR500 Yamahas were uh, sitting proudly up for sale on the Saturday at the show. Now shortly after the show opened I caught these uh, few pictures of the bikes and uh, when I returned only about an hour later uh, both of these bikes were then uh, sold. Now the WR of course uh, denotes the wide ratio which is uh, the wide ratio gearbox fitted to these uh, 500 Yamahas. Now these were basically just your run-of-the-mill YZ490s with uh, some improvements but uh, these uh, WRs were mainly aimed at enduro racing uh, mainly because of the wide ratio gearbox but a very nice pair of good-looking machines and the new owner uh, must be very pleased with himself. Now this was another little bike that uh, caught my eye 
on the Saturday at the show. Uh, it's a very nice, uh, lovely looking little YZ125 uh, uh, water cooled uh, Yamaha machine. Now there was no information with regards to the uh, year of manufacture of the bike and uh, I'm certainly not going to embarrass myself by uh, guessing what particular year this bike is but nevertheless it's a beautiful looking little machine and uh, these water cooled little 125 uh, Yamaha motors were very quick uh, little engines and very competitive uh, on the track uh, as I remember. Although if you've not attended the Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show before then please uh, by all means set your calendar for the 2021 event because there is so much uh, to see at the Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. I mean I was there for a full two days and still uh, never saw every single uh, stand or motorcycle that was uh, in the show. But believe me there are some cracking machines coming up in the remaining videos from this uh, 2020 Telford uh, Classic Dirt Bike event. But this is a superb looking uh, little uh, Yamaha YZ125. Uh, I, I don't think the bike was actually up for sale and uh, I think it was part actually of a, a club uh, organisation uh, display but uh, nevertheless you can see this bike is not a garage queen but it looks like this bike has uh, possibly even just been racing uh, days previous. Okay just to conclude our part one video from the 2020 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show we're going to take a look at the Rickman motorcycle stand. Now you don't need me to lecture you on the history of these exquisite uh, Rickman frames which of course were all started a way back in the 1960s by the legendary uh, Derek and Don Rickman. Now the design and engineering that went into these uh, beautiful uh, Rickman frames is uh, just uh, simply uh, exquisite. Now although Derek and Don Rickman sold the uh, Rickman company name uh, many years ago, these Rickman frames are still being manufactured right here in the UK to this uh, very day. Now you can purchase one of these Rickman frames to fit all manner of motorcycle engines including uh, Triumphs and BSAs and uh, possibly any other type of engine that uh, you could fit in one of these uh, superb frames. Now this particular uh, frame of course is uh, chrome plated. But of course don't uh, listen to me if you need any information. Just go to the RickmanMotorcycles.com uh, website. So that almost brings us to the end of part one from the 2020 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. Now we have many more videos uh, coming up with uh, more of these fantastic bikes from this 2020 event. So thanks for watching and we'll speak again very soon. This video was brought to you in association with Worldsport, the world's number one supplier for all your off-road and leisure sportswear. Just visit their online website for more information.